in this video. What have you done to this cow, sir? We're exploring the greatest street food hits. Oh my God. You'll find on Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. Good luck. Oh, you think I'm gonna die from this? But first, let's back up. Mexico is a huge country with distinct culinary regions. Oh, it took my breath away. Last time, I toured Mexico City. It's like a volcano. I'm enveloped in steam. And iconic Oaxaca. Oh, gracias. He's giving me some free cactus on the side. This time, we're in Yucatan State, and street food here Ooh. is completely different from what you'll find in the rest of the country. It's pig's blood. Have you ever had that before? No. No, thank you. Well, guess what? <laughs> From bustling markets, serving unlikely protein options. I've had tripe, I've had cow's feet, but never together. All the way to taco variations you never knew could exist. You can see those wrinkles. You know what those wrinkles are? I know where they are. Today, I'm on a mission to experience Mexican street food, Yucatan style. And it all starts here. This market is incredible. Is this the biggest market in Merida? It's one of the biggest, yeah. Welcome to Mercado Lucas de Galvez, an economic hub bustling with energy. It's like the Super Bowl of markets, but instead of touchdowns, we've got tacos, tamales, and cochinitas flying out left and right. Whatever you want to find, they have it here. The key to navigating this place is to keep your eyes peeled for anything and everything that looks delicious. To be fair, that's not hard to do. From juicy beef to succulent pork to seafood plucked fresh from the Gulf of Mexico. This is the heartbeat of Merida. This is a completely different region of Mexico, and it has its own culinary identity, including our first taste of Yucatan State, their beloved salbute. Start by flattening a ball of fresh corn flour dough, then give it a little bit of a dip in hot oil. Add succulent shreds of pulled tender turkey. I've had a lot of Mexican food in Mexico. I haven't seen turkey anywhere. We have more turkey than the rest of Mexico. Pour over a generous dose of Yucatan's infamous black sauce, crafted from one of the dozens of Mexico's most treasured roasted chilies. As a finishing touch, egg, with its roots dating back to the Mayan era, salbutes offer a tantalizing glimpse into the rich cultural heritage of the Yucatan Peninsula. Mm. Mm. The tortilla has a wonderful texture. It's a little bit crispy. Frying it made it fatten up a little bit, like me in my 20s when I was depressed. Have same. You, same? Yeah. But you are in your 20s. Well, when I was in my... In 18. And you got fat and depressed? Yeah. We all go through Life it. Life happens. Meet Kay, a local 25-year-old singer with Mayan roots. She will be guiding me through the Yucatan as I guide her through the cuisine of her home state. What is this? You know what it is. You'll see what I mean soon. Then the turkey, I don't think the turkey offers that much flavor. No, it's the seasoning. Right, the black sauce. I find it to be super savory. It has a very deep, delicious, salty flavor to it. And then over here, we have habanero juice. Well, it's like... Habanero milk? Not milk. How do you milk a habanero? You don't. So then what is this? It's... That seems like you're milking something. No. Ooh, it, it stinks. Uh, another she one. literally put two another teardrops. One. It's another. because you never know. It's like Russian roulette. Mm -hmm. mm. A bit spicy, very sour. Do they mix citrus in with it? Lemon. I love that. All over Merida, I see people mixing citrus with these different foods to kind of keep it fresh and preserved, but it adds some nice sourness to it. Merida, did you grow up here? Mm -hmm. What would you say is like the personality of this city? It's the safest city in Mexico. I've been in Mexico City and other cities. I think people are stressed. The people here seem like relaxed all the time. Maybe it's the heat. Yeah. They, they don't want to even move. Las people here seem really happy and kind. I love that. I would say that's my experience so far. So our mission today is to kind of see how food in the Yucatan state is different from the rest of Mexico. We had some delicious salbutas. I'm ready for more. Food in Yucatan has strong Mayan roots. Mayan culture here is ancient, dating back thousands of years. The same Mayans who erected Chichen Itza also worked with the land, developing a deep understanding for local ingredients and genius cooking techniques. So to truly understand the essence of Yucatan cuisine, you must try this. Hey, what's going on here? We are making pokchu. Pokchuk is an edible time machine that takes you back to the days of the ancient Mayans. Where did you learn this recipe? Mi mamá me lo enseñó. Where did your mom learn how to make this? Grandma, grandma's mom, and... 
Legend has it that the Mayans would marinate and smoke their meat as a preservation method. What's special about this pork compared to other pork sellers that are obviously not as good as you? It's marinated with naranja agria. Oh. So this is the orange I've been hearing about. This is the Yucatecan orange. Naranja, or sour orange, is a bright acidic citrus used often in marinades and salsas. Pokchuk here starts with fresh pork, raised very nearby the restaurant. It's seasoned with salt, garlic, black pepper, and that tangy naranja juice. Really important is to leave some fat in the meat because that gives it the pokchuk flavor. Fat is flavor. That's what I try to tell my wife every morning when she looks at the scale. As I step on, she does not agree with me. Anyways, once the seasoning permeates the pork, it hits the charcoal grill. It looks fantastic. The smell's coming off here. I wish people could experience what I'm experiencing right now. But wait, there's more. Our pork chook comes with their signature salsa, a perfect blend of smoky grilled tomatoes and fresh cilantro, ground up with a pinch of salt. The pork is grilled to perfection and served with a bed of fresh lettuce, diced onion, fragrant salsa, and a big slice of naranja. Because in Yucatan, there's no such thing as too much sourness. Fantastic. On the side, we have tortillas. Of course. We should try some of this meat right here. I gotta try it before I even put it in the taco. Oh my god. It's so good. Still warm from the grill. It's juicy. It's fresh. The seasonings really pop, so we have to mix this with other stuff. All together. We have habanero. It's a beautiful, thick, viscous bean sauce. It's the best. And then we have some onions with red chili. Mm -hmm. Now it's complete. Everything is contributing something. The habanero is quite spicy. The onion feels kind of roasted and smoky. It's so heavy. It's carby. It's delicious. If succulent grilled meats aren't enough for you, how about something a bit more bloody? That's liver with onions. This is morcilla, it's pig's blood. Have you ever had that before? No, no thank you. Well, guess what? <laughs> Thin slices of pork liver are seasoned just like the pork, then tossed in a pan of hot oil. Add red onion for a touch of sweetness and crunch. Get both sides nicely caramelized, then serve with a scoop of salsa and naranja. So you've never had liver before? Never, ever. Show me your piece of liver. Evan microscopic. That's fair for me. At least it's something. You saw this lady cook. She knows yeah. what she's doing. Let's go for it. Um. You're acting like it's a shot of mezcal. This is our first episode in this whole series. Imagine. It's gonna get way more intense than this. Let's go. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. But the final texture, I don't know. You don't know if you like it. I know I like it. I wasn't expecting that. It's hard to compare liver to anything else. Liver kind of tastes like liver. But see, this is why you gotta try new things. Here, it's cut super thin, it's marinated, she puts it on the grill, it's stunning, it's delicious, it's tender, and it's a perfect base if you want to add this to a taco or combine it with anything. It's very good. That leads me to our last food. Right here, they have blood tacos. How amazing! This unlikely taco is filled with a combination of pork blood and guts, fried together with tomato and chopped onion. Let's see how Kay fares with her first foray into the world of blood tacos. Mm, it's not as bad as I thought. Potentially even good? Yeah, I mean, it tastes just like meat. It's have you tried it meat. before? Everything you can think of, I've tried. Try to think of something insane. Iguanas. We're gonna have that later, and you're also gonna try that. Vegans always say that you should eat a portobello mushroom inside your burger because it's like meaty, they say. But you know what else is meaty? Blood. So if you are vegan, cook blood. Has Mayan cuisine kind of just become part of Mexican cuisine? Of course. Some people say it must be the best. Today, the impact of Mayan cuisine extends far beyond their own borders, influencing modern Mexican food as we know it. The next time you're chowing down on a plate of delicious Mexican food, remember that you have the Mayans to thank for some of those mouth-watering flavors. This is only meal two. We have three more to go. Let's go. There's still more liver. You want to try some more liver? I'm fine. To truly explore the depths of Yucatan cuisine, we must tread uncharted territory. If I know you, my guess is you've never had this before. No. Our next culinary endeavor is a dish introduced by the Spanish during the colonial period. It's known as mondongo. If you're squeamish with unusual textures, or if you're K. You don't even need this knife. What are you doing? They cut it up for you already. See? No, no, no. It's too big. This dish promises to take your taste buds on a wild ride with a list of unsettling offcuts. Water, cow feet, and cow tripe join a pot. Liven it up with oregano, pepper, garlic, salt, and achiote, an addictive staple Yucatan spice derived from manado seeds. 
This concoction simmers for hours until it transforms into a vibrant and mouth-watering crimson blend. I gotta ask you something. Is the whole country of Mexico sponsored by Coca-Cola? Yeah, basically. It's everywhere. Cool. It's on every chair in here. Even in the van area. Are people addicted to the sweetness? They are. When you're eating something like this, something super salty, savory, rich, you need that mix, that back and forth. Although I am not suggesting people drink Coke. Although I do drink Coke Zero. This is tripe. It's kind of fuzzy on one side, kind of like a carpet. The other side, nice and smooth. I think first you should get a big shaggy piece, at least this big. And we're gonna try it out. Mm -hmm. Is that chicharron, but soft? I totally agree. It is incredibly soft. It kind of falls apart as you're biting into it. The flavor is very nice. There's a very deep, savory flavor with a little bit of gaminess to it, but not off-putting. And then this right here is the foot. I'm going to show you about the wonderful world of tendon. Oh my god. <sighs> it's gooey, gelatinous, rich. These are some of the most delicious organs and offcuts I've tried ever. Mm. You don't like it? Mm -mm. What's wrong with it? I don't know. The flavor, I like it. But the texture feels weird. I don't like gelatinous stuff. You know, that's full of collagen. I know. Women love collagen. I know. Something like this, a cow foot, it has to be made with love. They have to take off the outer part of the hoof and then they have to boil it for hours and hours. Residually, all that yummy flavor in there is gonna be right here in the broth. That's fantastic. Rich, flavorful. Like comfort food. I love this. It's like chicken soup for the soul, except made with cow feet. Exactly. I got no. How are you feeling? I'm good. You ready to give up? Yeah. No. Okay, you, you started with yes. I don't give up. We're gearing up to tackle an absolutely thrilling, mind-bending dish. One that I know that Kay will love. And yes, I'm saying that sarcastically. But first, to lull Kate into a false sense of security, the torta de lechon. It starts with toasted bread. Overloaded with juicy, succulent lechon or roasted pork. So sandwich? It's not lechon. sandwich, nice. torta. Because sandwich, you use sandwich bread. This special one is called pan francés. We only have it in Yucatan. Layer in chicharron for texture, then top it off with a dollop of aromatic pico de gallo. You gotta be careful, because the bread is actually quite delicate and soft. Mmm. Off the bat, it is the perfect amount of that crunchy chicharron. It's like when you're young, poor, and white trash, and you put chips inside your sandwich, and you're like, it's different. I love that. Have you ever been young, poor, and white trash? No, it's white. But Mexican. trash. Mexican oh. trash. <laughs> <laughs> it's sour, and it's habanero-y. I'm gonna put some of that on there. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. Oh man. The meat inside is tender, it's juicy. I am addicted to the habanero flavor, I love it. I think it's the best chili. There's something bold and intense and like, they put 30% toxic masculinity into it. I want to ask you about your music career. Is your full-time gig to be a musician? Right now, I would say full-time content creator. How'd you get started? I started when my mom had forced me to join singing lessons because she heard me. I was super like stage fright. I couldn't do anything, not even talk. And she forced me into it and thanks to her, I'm here now. Like I started five years ago and I started to sing in Instagram, TikTok, and people really liked it. I have been recording my own music this past few months. So when those are released, I'm going to be a full-time musician. And what is the end goal for you? What would you hope comes out of this? I want to be a full-time musician. Concerts, touring, music. Everything. You think you can handle that life? Yeah. It's a wild life. Uh, Our last food, can you write a song about it? I might. What key was that? <laughs> Whenever you find protein in Yucatan, if it's not in a torta, it's generally tucked into a corn tortilla and eaten taco style. The taco possibilities are only limited by your imagination. And maybe also your access to cow heads. Look into where its sunken eyes kind of used to be, and does it make you hungry? Yeah. Yeah? Kinda. To the Mayans, the cow head was a symbol of prosperity, a revered delicacy enjoyed by generations. Here in this 30-year-old family taco wagon, the cow head shows up ready to eat after hours of grazing. What's magical really? about head meat is there's a variety of textures. 
what are the different cuts that are available? No, no, sí, sí. Más hizo kind of cheek area. Para dar dentro. Oh, the roof of the mouth? That's its own category. Love it. Sí, eso. Brain, la, la tráquea. Tráquea meat. Ojo. Oh, oh, is eye. Yes. Lengua. The tongue. Okay, thank you for the visual <laughs> reference. You heard every different cut that he has here. Yeah. Which one kind of scares you the most? The cheeks. Yeah, cool. What I've learned from that answer is that she understands me now. And so she actually told me something that she would like to eat. I'm pretty smart, huh? But I know, actually, the say-so is what freaks you out the most. You told me in a phone call previously that you knew we were not going to eat brain in this whole series. Turns out, we have a perfect opportunity right here to eat brain. Isn't that fantastic? Fantastic. We're going for the ultimate taco experience with three varieties. First up, the undisputed local favorite, cheek beat. Minced down into nearly unrecognizable shreds. And topped with onion and cilantro. Right here we have the cheek tacos, but before we get into that, I want to recognize right here, Pepsi. In a country sponsored by Coke, they're giving it all they got. Hit it with a little bit of citrus. A lot. We're going to slowly work our way up to the more unique cuts of head. Cheers. Hmm. Oh, this is spicy. The meat, I find it be soft. More sticky and fatty, but I like it. I like it. Wasn't expecting this. See? You've had so many new experiences today. I'm learning a lot. It's hilarious it. that I came to Mexico and I met somebody and I'm like, let me show you tacos. It's fresh off the grill. Delicious. I love it. Tortilla is nice, hot, and soft. That's course one. Let's do the next one. Next up, a taco variety that Kay has shockingly never tried before. Tacos filled with gooey, warm cow brains. You can see those wrinkles. You know what those wrinkles are? I know what they are. So far, are you enjoying the tacos? More than I thought I would. And this could just be a continuation of that. Step one. Lemon. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of sauce. You've tried a lot of new foods today. I'm proud of you. I want you to bite into this with confidence and assume it's gonna be delicious. Bing, bing, bing. Mm -hmm. Doesn't feel as lean as I like to, but it's not like the mondongo. It's unexpectedly Good. The only person who would have a lean brain would be maybe a mummy. Mm. Um, did you? Can we get a close up here? Hey! Was there a bite taken? Okay, I need you to just take a nice piece of brain and just eat the brain all night. It's a cow brain. You know what it tastes like? Octopus. So, not bad, huh? No. It's kind of gooey, it's got a fatty texture. It swallows perfectly. I love it. Well done. That said, we have one taco remaining. Our final variety was recommended by the chef personally. Tongue meat tacos. From that mammoth bovine tongue to minced meaty bits. This is art on a little corn disc. So you've never had tongue before? Never. Tongue is one of the most delicious off cuts of meat. Have you ever had like chicken hearts? Never. What the f do you eat? Cereal is my favorite. Oh my God. <laughs> Let's try out some tongue tacos. Mmm. Perfect. Mmm. Lean. Not fatty, not jiggly, not like me when I brush my teeth and I look down no. and I'm like, oh dear God. When it's mints like this, it probably just tastes kind of like a steak. It's a bit more of like a dense meat, super satisfying, delicious, great texture, and even better flavor. 100%. The only thing to do from here is to finish this video so I can go home. Mm. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. What's it called? Naranjagria. Kendrick Lamar. That's where this pig held all its knowledge. Like, where it is what? Pig. Cow. Ah. So you have a bunch of turkeys just running around, so you eat them. If you go to where people like grow their own turkeys, yes, you do. How do you grow a turkey? They grow by yeah. themselves. How do you say this? Naranjagria. Niagara Falls. Almost. Uh, in high school, I could have taken French, Spanish, or German, and I chose German. Big mistake. The number of times I needed to speak German in my life, I think zero. But do you still remember something? Ich heiße Wilhelm. That's it. My name is Wilhelm. Very Papa. useful. So if you are vegan, cook blood. Wait, that comes from animals too, though, right? I think so. But some animals could donate blood. Or you you could donate your own blood and then eat it. That would be a bit cannibalistic, but I would consider it. As long as it got me views. Sura del seso. You're asking about the texture? Yeah, I want to be, I want to feel safe. Suave rico. Suave rico. Rico suave. <laughs> Boom, that is the end of our first video here in the city of Merida. I hope you enjoyed it, but I got to say a huge thank you to the lady right next to me. Her name is Kay Minak.
Kay is an extremely talented musician and singer. If you want to check her out on YouTube or Instagram or any platform, check out Kay Manok. That is the name to follow. Otherwise, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Thank you. Uh, peace. No, Wait, like what, did, what the f heck? Did I did it correctly. I malfunctioned. It. Okay, we got to get out of here. Driver. Dr <laughs> Where's the driver? <laughs>